Welcome back to part 2 of episode 10. Let's hit it real quick. Point 3. The Autobots' incompetence, passive leadership and resistance towards full militarization prevents them from ever defeating the Decepticons. Like the Decepticons, the Autobots are somewhat driven by their initial Quintesson programming to make stuff run. But unlike the Decepticons, the Autobots actually can carry out their programming properly. I regret that may be a premature conclusion. There's no denying these guys can lock down a fully functioning, energy self-sufficient society if given half the chance. But unfortunately, maintaining a peaceful civilization is not the task at hand. That task is defeating the Decepticons and the the Autobots suck at this whole war thing as well. We can't blame them for starting the war, but we can blame them for never fully committing to ending it once and for all. The Autobots' overarching plan is merely to monitor for Decepticon activity, and after its discovery, Optimus will usually send out his underlings to see what the hell is going on. But the specifics of how everything plays out is usually left up to the individual Autobots conducting the mission. But it doesn't work. It never worked. Even when they have specific orders, they will often completely disregard them. The Autobot grunts are generally more intelligent than your average Decepticon. I don't know. Maybe. But unfortunately, their lax command structure still leaves the Autobot dumbasses to mess things up. With some Autobots, you have to explain everything. Besides a few mature Autobots, most of these guys start acting up as soon as Optimus is out of earshot. The Autobot lower ranks are filled by one-upsmen with massive inferiority complexes. No one calling me a robot chicken! If this experience proves anything, it is that you need further instruction. Making foolish tactical moves without considering the consequences and in disregard of the overall mission or strategy. Maybe we can slow it down. Ready, Sunstreaker? I believe I can solo this sound. Everybody can use a little help now and then, Sunstreaker. You must function as one perfectly tuned unit. Yep, the Autobots have their own little pissing contest going on. Less interested in winning the war, more interested in who was around to witness their reckless behavior. Your interpersonal activities are delaying our progress. Most initial Autobot sorties play out like a bunch of schoolboy larrikins pranking a rival fraternity, messing with each other's computers, changing their screensavers and whatnot. Moves which at best temporarily hinder the Decepticons' operations. Sure, there'll be a few black eyes and bruised asses, but at the end of the day, it's just some sort of game for them. If you have a brain, you'll realize we've got a battle to fight! But this casual attitude towards warfare leads to a series of serious tactics oversights. This is a life-threatening situation, and your attention should be focused on one thing alone. Skyfire was frozen in ice for millions of years. After being thawed out, he betrays the Decepticons and signs up with the Autobots almost immediately, because he's a big softy. My function is to further science and learning. Not to destroy innocent life forms. This guy is larger than Optimus Prime and epitomizes the Autobot value system. The pompous gullible fool! <laughs> but after all of one mission, his new allies abandon him like he was dead or hopelessly lost. He won't be forgotten, Spike. He will live forever. So long as freedom exists. Pure drivel. Later, they dig him up again like it was no biggie. And then, to add insult to injury, Wheeljack demotes him to Errand Boy as soon as he's able to transform. Head back to Autobot headquarters on the double. You gotta pick up Brawn and Windcharger and fly to the Andes Mountains. They abandon and then fail to properly utilize the largest Autobot to join their modern forces so far. Skyfire is rarely used in a military capacity, but it probably doesn't matter because the few times Skyfire was ordered to attack Decepticons, he failed miserably. No doubt because his battle strategy is pretty damn poor. Where are you, traitor? Show yourself! Here I am! You fools! 
this guy ends up being nothing but a glorified taxi service for the Autobots. A taxi cab would have been less worrisome and more ethical. And then poof, he was gone. Some other time, perhaps? The Autobots, afflicted with short bot syndrome, will sometimes fling themselves at much larger Decepticons the moment they see them, delivering a laughably small blow. These tiny robots are consistently overconfident. What do humans call it? Short talk? Here, they encourage Skyfire to gap it. You sure you two don't need my help? We got it covered, Skyfire. We'll let you play kick the can with what's left of Megatron and his merry machine. Before inevitably being overwhelmed and calling him back. Come in, Skyfire. <laughs> Read you loud and clear, little buddy. Not to help with the assault, of course. They just needed another ride. Send our battle taxis into action. Most auto grunts have a shoot first policy. Usually, their default play is to fire immediately, often giving up any advantage of surprise they may have had. I will schedule additional battle drills for all hands. I wouldn't call most of the low rank Autobots stupid, but I would definitely call them naive. Most concerningly, they are consistently tricked by the obvious schemes of some of the Decepticons. So why can't we pull our skills now? Imagine Hoist. With their help, we could build a power tower easily. Rickgar, an Autobot allied junkie on and a soulless advertising show. You would improve for a limited time your money back. He spews an endless stream of inane pop culture TV references. Ward, I think we've been a little rough on the beaver. Of course, Michael Bay dug this so much, he ripped out Bumblebee's voice box to pull off the same shtick. XM Satellite Radio, Digital Cable brings you the broadcasting system. I was a victim of circumstance. Well, I had to squeeze in a cheeky Michael Bay pot shot somewhere. Yo, don't come back now, you hear? Substantial penalty for early withdrawal. And now to probably the dumbest yet most lovable Autobot. I just can't stay angry at him. It's Grimlock. Tell story! This guy is an absolute treasure. I will never cease to be amazed by the human capacity for hyperbole. Leader of a notable band of dumbasses, the Dinobots. Hey, friends! These guys are pretty tough, and they definitely know how to knock some skulls. Mighty Grimlock stomp bad guys, no problem! But they value power and physical strength over any other concerns. Uh, me. Me, Grimlock, must lead. Grimlock and the Dinobots are the Autobots' brainless muscle. Mostly Grimlock just bashes stuff to bits. Mm, me, Grimlock, feel important. But early on, he's also a destabilizing force within the Autobots by constantly questioning Optimus Prime's leadership. We do as told for now. When he isn't mounting ham-fisted coups or betraying the Autobots by accident, he spends his days stomping around demanding answers for very basic concepts. Me Grimlock no understand. Ah, for the love of many microchips. He's a sad indictment on the intelligence of children since he's basically an exposition monster designed just for them. I don't know. My mom says never to go off with strangers. Everybody here, stranger. Us not go with stranger. Us not go. But my word, is he a good laugh? Only joking. <laughs> In season 3 and 4, the Autobots are always wasting time calming down or explaining shit to Grimlock, at key moments when they should really be making plays. Something incapacitated their aerial capabilities. Huh? He means they couldn't fly so they crashed. Grimlock often chooses to remain in dino form, even at times of casual conversation. No doubt because this form complements his dumbassery to a T. Why you think Grimlock's stupid? Grimlock also makes his fair share of cock-ups, but admittedly, it's usually a 50-50 chance as to whether this will end up being a loss or a comical Jar Jar Binks-like win. You clumsy empty-headed construct! Grimlock may be dumb as a sack of bricks, but he ends up saving the day fairly often. Grimlock saved the universe! <laughs> Just don't ask him to stop any incoming meteors. Grimlock know what he does! 
Even when he gets smart and starts making intentional gains for the Autobots, he still does it in his own stupid way. That was hardly necessary. Grimlock creates an entire team of new Autobots to counter the threat of the Terracons. I, Grimlock, shall call you the Technobots. Grimlock's Technobots are even created with nice Autobot-like attitudes. You built us! You're a genius, Grimlock! We can survive without you! And one of them is a triple changer with a cannon mode, which is probably the biggest intentional military upgrade they've had since Optimus made the aerial bots. Still trying to up the ante. How pathetic. But weirdly, Grimlock started off this whole endeavor simply because he needed a drill. Transform! Drill me a safe passage deep into Unicron's brain. Grimlock then willingly gives up his epic new brain so his creation, Computron, can function properly. My computation capacity is nearly infinite. Yet I lack the intelligence to feed my capacity. Except Computron's new smarts end up being his biggest liability. Calculating return fire pattern. What a tragic waste. Computron, think too much. Your stupid warrior is just standing there! Arguably, the Autobots' main weakness is their compassion, a trait that the Decepticons take advantage of many times. Your selfless action will cost you your function cycle. Me, Grimlock, seen this part ten times already. But as with the Decepticons, the Autobots' most critical failings lie with their inadequate leadership. It's Optimus Prime. Go on without me. Yep, I'm going there. I want holographic views of Optimus Prime from every angle! For a start, this guy probably shouldn't even exist. Optimus' existence itself is some sort of weird time paradox. He created the aerial bots in the present, only for them to be sent back in time, where they facilitate the creation of Optimus himself. Me, Grimlock, say no! Why? Who then waged a pointless war for countless years, lied down on Earth for millions more years, then started the cycle all over again. You have to do what? So it seems like the original timeline has been wiped away, and we're stuck with this guy. Just as it always was, like the rest of New York City. No! Oh, please, God, no! The white knight of the Transformers and surrogate dad to many a fatherless child. But remember, your volume, like any capability, is also a responsibility. You must decide when is the right time and the wrong time to use it. Optimus Prime is an inspiring orator, to be sure. Fat sense, fathead! You have such a way with words! But his most prominent quality is his icky, saintly level of goodness. Gross. Except for the whole imprisonment and enslavement of the Dinobots thing, but we don't talk about that. They have proven their value. The Dinobots shall remain among us. <laughs> Normally though, this guy is so squeaky clean that his effectiveness as a leader suffers because of it. Do you think you could possibly behave a little less like yourself? On the very first mission we see on Earth, What's-His-Face is ordered to observe the Decepticons only. I wanna boot some Decepticon right in his turbocharger. Easy, Cliff Jumper. Just find them. We'll deal with them later. What are you doing? I've got Megatron dead center in my viewfinder. But then, when he cheekily fires and alerts them to the Autobot's survival, Optimus completely ignores the severe error in judgment. Jazz, organize a battle unit. We're going after them. He will inadequately deal with these issues, usually brushing them off, or offering understanding and forgiveness, without addressing the underlying attitude problems and procedural errors that are causing these cock-ups. Just a hair more? I don't need your help. My precision is uncanny. Don't worry, Grapple. We all make mistakes. 
by the time Optimus gets his ass off the couch for the episode's final battle. It's typically a reckless full frontal assault without a thought for battle strategy. Proposing the same flawed strategy over and over again will not make it more effective. And even with their leader present, the Auto Grunts will regularly disregard his orders or act rashly, executing unplanned moves that Optimus can do nothing to stop except scream at the futility of it all. After them! They're Save it, Ironhide! They're too fast for us in the air. Well, I'm tired of sucking their vapor trail. I'll stop them! Ironhide, come back! Of course, these reckless acts really work to the Autobots' advantage. But does Optimus give his underlings any sort of reprimand or appropriate coaching? Hardly. Just remember, there's a thin line between being a hero and being a memory. And it doesn't help that Autobot lieutenants will often reinforce these behaviors by framing their actions in a more positive light. The Decepticon attack was my fault. I was away from my post when I should have been sounding the alarm. Ah, oh, knock that off or I'll disconnect your synthesizer. You're a great warrior. I'm sorry, hon. It's my fault. I shouldn't have fired on Megatron. <laughs> you shouldn't have missed, you mean. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right! <laughs> As you can see, everyone seemed perfectly willing to go along with this breach of orders. There is also the occasional problem with bullying among the Autobots, which Optimus Orbit ignores too. That'll do, Cliffjumper. We don't want bad feelings, just the electrocells. Real work is crushing Decepticons, not fussing with chips. It takes more than muscle to fight. Yeah. It takes courage, or maybe that word's not in your fancy vocabulary. That's enough, all of you. Funny, you don't have a scratch on you. Broad, lay off, Perceptor. If I hear one more word against him, you'll answer to me. Do you have any better ideas, or is your intelligence as fleeting as your courage? Get inside Megatron and disconnect the heart of Cybertron. What do you think of his intelligence now, Braun? As Captain, I must not ignore the sensibilities of those I command. The only times we see Optimus get serious is usually when he himself has made a poor decision, at which point, to his credit, he usually admits his mistake. Perhaps I did make the wrong decision. Cliffjumper, turn us around. And have you reached a conclusion as to your error? It's good that at least some mistakes do get acknowledged, but on the whole, Optimus is a timid, ineffective boss. You He'll advertise his own shortcomings without properly addressing the errors committed by others. Incompetence breeds even more incompetence! He's verging on being a complete pushover. Flop them us, Prime! It's not a recipe for improving individual Autobot performance or the likelihood of victory. The Decepticons give us less trouble than this. This is another organizational system that institutionalizes mistakes. Optimus places far too much value on maintaining positive morale. Morale is irrelevant to a Vulcan. Generally putting out the good feels, but he mostly ends up satisfying the fragile gratification-seeking egos of the other Autobots. I believe it demonstrates faulty leadership to be guided by the emotions of a distraught crew. It's safe to say Optimus Prime's staff development strategy is anything but optimal. <laughs> But let's be clear, Optimus does indeed make a ton of good decisions. He wins almost every battle he enters into. But it's irrelevant because he achieves almost nothing to advance the war effort. Long-term Autobot war strategy is virtually non-existent. Almost every Autobot plan is just a response to a Decepticon plan. Something Megatron wants. And if he wants it, we don't want him to get it. The Autobots end up on an accidental crusade to secure the market value of Earth's most defenseless energy conglomerates. Follow me, Autobots, into the crevice. Protecting humanity's resources against the greedy Decepticons by defending oil rigs, oil refineries, coal mining operations, and a few solar energy plants for good measure. The Autobots actually have energy solutions that could end conflicts and pollution on Earth. Yet they choose not to help the humans they claim they are protecting. You are not acting according to your own mind and will. 
but they don't just withhold this tech from humans. The Autobots actively prevent the Decepticons from acquiring even sustainable sources of power, apparently living under the same misconception as Megatron. The energy benefits would be enormous. I agree completely. That energy alone creates political power. If it ever fell into Megatron's hands. Power is power. Sure, we can understand that Megatron could maybe fashion a super weapon if given a lot of energy, but surely some basic energy production should be permitted to the Decepticons, if only to stop them pilfering from others. Stop quibbling! But the Autobots do mostly succeed in their primary venture, which seems to be protecting humans from the Decepticons, though they never give a thought to the idea that perhaps their presence in itself causes danger to their beloved humanity. Your presence and the the presence of others like you does endanger us. Despite taking a keen interest in protecting private profit margins, the Autobots don't seem to give a rat's ass about any other type of collateral damage. <laughs> Confused. They really attempt to draw the Decepticons away from other types of infrastructure. In fact, they sometimes take part in conflicts that could have devastating consequences for humanity. I want you to knock the Constructicons off that asteroid and blow it out of the sky. I'll blow that asteroid out of the sky and sit back while the beast throws this planet into other chaos. The Autobots start their life on Earth with restoring Cybertron in mind. But it's not too long before Optimus is calling Earth their home and seemingly giving up any dreams of returning to or restoring Cybertron. I don't understand. I thought you wanted to go home. The Autobots ignore the ample opportunity they had to invade Cybertron while Shockwave was playing babysitter, and instead only seek to restore their home planet once the Decepticons have full control over it. You and your stupid plans! Sure, their excuse is they're defending those weak humans, who are strangely passive and helpless despite having comparable military technology to ours. Anyway, the Decepticons could easily be lured from Earth. Just invade Cybertron and I'm sure the Decons won't be letting that shit fly. You can do it. Good luck. But that plan would be far too bold for the Autobots, who really devote a thought on how to ultimately defeat the Decepticons. The answer is Megatron. And this is most starkly observed in their subtle resistance towards militarizing further or improving their destructive potential. Minimal shields and no functional weapons. First off, Autobot weapons will often inflict next to no damage. No effect. Even when firing at Decepticons in a weakened, energy deficient state. So it probably doesn't matter then that their aiming skills are close to non existent. All Transformers seem to be able to aim well when they need to shoot an inanimate object. But when it comes to shooting at each other, both the Autobots and Decepticons have the aiming skills of a blah alien fresh out of Stormtrooper training academy. Mechanical glitches would seem to be the least of our problems. But do the Autobots actually want to kill anyone though? No, me Grimlock just wanted to know. Optimus Prime's passive nature is shared by several other more cerebral Autobots and is an ideology that has been forced upon the lower ranks for most of their existence. They can barely admit to themselves that they are, or at least should be, a race of warriors. In the charade, they do not engage in aggressive tactics or strategy, and are consistently merciful against their ancient enemy. Assemble a commando raiding party. But you did not. Try to remember that. The Decepticons may have some intention of killing the Autobots, while being too incompetent to actually do so. I say who dies and when! However, the Autobots, and especially Optimus, don't even pretend they intend to kill them some Decepticons. Besides a vengeful Optimus getting fairly trigger happy when he was first created, we never see the Autobots murder anyone in modern times. How in the hell do they plan on ending this war? The Autobots will either let the Decepticons get away or throw them out of sight before Optimus declares victory. At least Megatron actually believes he has destroyed the Autobots when he does this. Optimus seems to know that the Decepticons survived. Is it really over, Optimus? I mean, have we seen the end of this war forever? Who can say, Spike, in this vast universe is anything truly forever?
That is perhaps the most illogical statement you've ever made. Allowing them to escape in their weakened, vulnerable state. If a Decepticon actually died during a scuffle, Optimus would probably feel horrible. You are probably feeling the emotion known as remorse, possibly guilt. I advise you to look on this incident as a learning experience. So of course, these guys aren't going to place too much importance on obtaining proper military hardware, or upgrading their alternate forms into something more suited to this conflict. It's not really their fault, but I'm gonna make fun of it anyway. Good grief. More bad news. Yes, the Autobots rule the roads. In a massive universe full of threats that have zero to little interest in smuggling illicit cargo along Earth's highways. How naive. The Autobots' vehicular modes do seem to have some weaponry, which they really use. But land vehicles themselves don't offer much of an advantage since their foes can operate both on the ground and in the air. Dispense with those primitive devices. It just relegates the Autobots to the low ground. It's no wonder they're getting jumped in canyons every other day. You never learn, do you? Though the Autobots do mop up a few airborne troops as time goes on. Besides the aerial bots, these recruitments are merely a matter of happenstance. Welcome home, noble voyager! On Cybertron in Episode 1, and after countless years of warfare, our main Autobots are still just regular transit vehicles. And we know they have some sort of capacity for scanning and becoming other forms. Because on Earth, after Starscream made his initial major cock-up, waking the Autobots from their lengthy nap, Teletran 1 scanned for new Autobot forms and made them the most innocuous vehicles possible. Except somehow Optimus was also created millions of years ago, looking suspiciously like an Earth big rig in humanoid form, but whatever. My curiosity is aroused. It's said that the original transforming capability was developed by the Autobots as a stealth advantage. Though that strategy doesn't seem a logical one to maintain. Since the Autobots enemies have known what they look like for a long time now, and everyone has a prominent badge determining their faction. That does not satisfy my logic circuits. The Autobot vehicle forms are so harmless that Decepticons almost defeated the Autobots simply by transfixing them into their vehicle modes, at which point they just lined up for the hangman's noose, offering little resistance. I Grimlock detect that our friends are in mortal peril. Considering what the Autobots are seen to accomplish once the Decepticons have forced them into action. They could easily run a mission or two dedicated to creating new, more advantageous forms for themselves if they really wanted to. As we've seen, on occasion Optimus has facilitated the creation of units to give the Autobots a tactical advantage. So props for that. One of the few times we see the Autobots randomly deploy a military vehicle, it's a tank, Warpath. But the Decepticons also magic up a new triple changer tank Decepticon, Blitzwing, which at best cancels out the Autobots new militarized comrade. The Decepticons and Autobots both have the annoying habit of matching the opposing side in terms of numbers, which I'm sure has absolutely nothing to do with selling toys. There's still no indication of where they're coming from. So it seems a different weapon escalation strategy is in order for the Autobots. The Decepticons do not rest on their laurels when it comes to acquiring better weaponry. Our priority should be to increase the weapon's arsenal and to begin training everyone in the use of these weapons. And what the Autobots do have, they hardly use. Quite a few Autobot units have powerful defensive abilities which they only seem to use as a once-off last resort. This guy, Perceptor, is actually pretty smart, and he'd be the greatest scientist we see in the series if only Brainy Grimlock wasn't a thing. Now why didn't I think of that? Perhaps because your mental abilities are so limited. Perceptor is perhaps the sole reason the Autobots and the Decepticons haven't met their extinction. He ain't gonna be making any weapons to win the war though, that's for sure. Me, Grimlock, say you smart now. Me, no can help you anymore. The main Autobot force also includes several outright pacifists, who are reluctant to take part in the conflict at all. Notable examples are Cerebros and First Aid. Put it back. Now! 
who despises violence yet seems to tolerate it when he's inflicting damage as Defensor's arm. Such noble nonsense. We also see a distinct Autobot society, a planet full of Autobot pacifists who broke away from the main Autobot population to escape the war, and who now are about as intimidating as a fish out of water. Though full-blown pacifism is a rarity among the Autobots we follow, most Autobots are still of the reluctant warrior variety. If Lieutenant Tuvok were here, I know he would tell you there are times when violence is required. That may be a nice character trait during peacetime, but an unwillingness to kill is not preferable in a war with a ruthless enemy. The Autobots are so dedicated to maintaining an illusion of half-assed pacifism, they are missing massive opportunities that could end this war for good. And ironically, finally allow their devastated population to lug around crap on Cybertron like they always wanted to. Yes. Alpha Trion says he created Optimus to be the first in a new line of Autobots to defeat the threat of the latest Decepticon uprising. Yet he only gives them the amazing ability to transform into a truck. He is harmless. <laughs> Not to mention he has no inbuilt weaponry in his humanoid form. No weapons of any kind. Even Ultra Magnus got a better deal than this. But the Autobots could still win this war even with their ineffective forms. Because the Decepticons can be defeated as a unified threat simply by assassinating Megatron or Galvatron. But would they ever? Of course not, they've had the chance many times. There's a pretentiousness about the Autobots like they're still trying to cling to their historical roles. But after millions of years as soldiers, if they just follow through and do their jobs, the war could be over tomorrow. Not yet, you puny human! It's a similar warped philosophy to that of Starfleet from Star Trek, who go around pretending they're not a military organization while blowing the hell out of anyone who starts shit. But at least the Federation's philosophy is more a smoke and mirrors act. The Autobots really do anything that would improve their chances of winning battles. I am representing your position to the best of my ability. It is most definitely not my own. They need to learn that simply being nice is not enough to actually win anything. You can afford to be nice once you've declared yourself the ultimate ruler of Cybertron from atop a mountain of smoking Decepticon bits. Silence! Ending this perpetual war by any brutal, destructive, or devious means necessary is really the nicest option available, all things considered. And you don't need to go full asshole either. Ah, unconscious. She won't feel a thing. Sure, save that worthless human boy who was always compromising your missions. Save the poor innocent oil industry, that's fine. Just make sure you also ruthlessly kill all the bad guys and be done with it. I don't care if this is a kid's show. Believe it or not, this is the fun part. And then, perhaps worst of all, there was that one episode when a few Autobots got transformed into flesh creatures. And absolutely no one tried to bang RC. You tried to hook up with Ultra Magnus and- Whoa, wait a minute, hold. It, pal. The Autobots are willingly submitting to a no-win campaign of endless war that could only conceivably end with the victory of the Decepticons and the total destruction of the Autobots. You're finished! <laughs> But things improve a little in the Transformers the movie, when Optimus finally makes a few bold moves and shock horror actually manages to defeat Megatron. But at the cost of his life, before dying horribly, he makes one final error, a pitiful choice in a successor, Ultra Magnus. What's he talking about? We're gonna get killed. The toy Hasbro hoped your ignorant child would mistake for Optimus in the toy store. He's got the wafty rhetoric of Optimus down. Undisciplined thinking can make even the simplest task impossible. But then he has none of the decision making skills. He reigns as the Autobots leader for all of 10 minutes before he totally fails his mission and almost dies himself. I am just a soldier. I I'm not worthy. Though at least he has the intelligence to acknowledge his true role in this conflict. I've never seen anything this beautiful in the entire galaxy. All right, give me the bomb. 
Leadership then falls to Hot Rod, some random guy who showed up just now. He becomes Rodimus Prime. I'll give the Autobots a point for at least having individuals who are willing to step up and lead. And with this next leader, I'm forced to go easy on the Autobots when it comes to the events in Season 3 onwards. No more filming! Because Rodimus manages to lock shit down tighter than we've ever seen before. Though there is still some notable Autobot arrogance. Save your ammunition, Autobots! Superior forces are taking over! Hey, they like to let in weirdos! Gives a place atmosphere! The juvenile behavior among their ranks is greatly diminished. Cybertron also falls under full Autobot control. That's half the Autobots' mission accomplished right there. Even the Dinobots are seemingly brought to heel. Grimlock seems positively giddy. <laughs> Perhaps partially tamed by another random conscript, Cup. Me, Grimlock, love Cup's war stories. The apparent old timer in a group of ancient robots. You know, this reminds me of the time my platoon was stranded on Regulan 4. Yes, the Optimus successor we were all doomed to hate is also the Autobot's most successful leader. Who, me? Yeah. Though Rodimus does suffer from confidence issues. But things are beginning real tough lately. I've got so many responsibilities I'm not sure I can handle them all. It is illogical to dwell on situations beyond your control. And is possibly a manic depressive. He comes close to throwing in the towel on several occasions. I don't think I've got what it takes to be our leader. Maybe it's time I turned over the reins to someone else. Matrix, Matrix, find some other sucker to carry it. Cause I quit! I see no persuasive evidence that a life like yours should be wasted simply because you are disgruntled. It seems the Autobot reluctance to fully commit to the conflict remains. Day in and day out, punch this Decepticon, bash that Decepticon. What's the point? This has been going on for a few dozen millennia now, and I don't see it changing, do you? And his leadership style is pretty immature to say the least. Since when am I the only one who can solve everybody's problems? There is little point in furthering this discussion. <laughs> Just leave me alone! You are becoming emotionally distraught. Rather than do any meaningful coaching when Grimlock messes up, Rodimus instead chooses to lead a fairly nasty bullying campaign against him. Oh great. Just great. That was our only guide to the power core. Guide? No need guide. Have Grimlock. Don't remind me. No, you think me Grimlock just stupid? You no want me anymore! Grimlock, what did you do? Fight the controls? I just wish all the Dinobots had more sophisticated brains. Rodimus isn't immune to making the odd strategic error too. For a start, this mofo caused the death of Optimus Prime. And though he acknowledges that he will never be able to live up to a leader as great as Optimus. Optimus Prime, who could live up to him? He not once acknowledges that it's totally his fault he was forced into leadership in the first place. It would only serve to heighten your anxiety. Which, if I may say so, is heightened enough. Later, Rodimus chooses to blow up the planet of the Autobot pacifists, just to prevent the Decepticons from taking it. Blow the planet's energon core! That'll destroy the entire planet! I know, Sandstorm, but if the Decepticons get this planet, every other planet in the universe is vulnerable. This planet is like another Cybertron. No, better than Cybertron, since it has a near limitless supply of energy. This is actually a great example of what the Autobots could do if left to their own devices. But Rodimus takes the easy option, choosing to blow it up. This is one of the only times we see the Autobots acting destructively and it's a completely short-sighted plan. I must also regretfully report that Ensign Wildman's baby did not survive. No wonder these dudes left Cybertron, you guys are crazy. We've jumped from not wanting to kill anyone to destroying an entire civilization on a whim. Quite an interesting little drama, isn't it? The Decepticons would supposedly be unstoppable had they gained full control of this planet's energy reserves. But dude, just go blast them away like you always do. Decepticons, abandon the planet! But no matter who is leading, throughout their entire existence, we have never seen the Autobots take their niceness to its inevitable conclusion. Peace negotiations. Convince them 
That's it. Sure, there are a few truces of convenience along the way, and the Autobots are all too willing to hear out the Decepticons' attempts to deceive them. You morons! But at no point do the Autobots actually sit down and try to offer them anything on the condition of a lasting peace. It might bring stability to the region, and security for us. They could offer the Decepticons an ongoing supply of energy. All right, we'll talk. Or set them up with their own planetary operation. Something. I understand your concern, but remember, it would only be a temporary arrangement. At the very least, it could encourage a few defectors to jump ship. First, drain evil. Second, recharge good. Granted, it's unlikely to work in the long term due to the erratic nature of the Decepticon leadership. Thanks to the Energon we made from your oil, I'm stronger than ever! But in an endless war, anything is worth a shot. By the end of Season 4, some of our favourite characters have been plucked back into existence for one last sales drive. Even Optimus Prime comes back in a form that isn't a terrifying zombie. Ah! <laughs> and the last two episodes alone feature a veritable treasure trove of new Headmaster Transformers. At this stage, I would tend to agree that the Transformers will probably function better with organic beans integrated into their skulls. Though they had to lose their heads to accomplish it, most importantly, the Autobot side of Transformers society finally enters a state of peace. It's a miracle. When they unexpectedly absolve themselves of responsibility in stopping Galvatron's schemes. But what of the Decepticons? There may always be Decepticons. Allowing the Decepticons to go run amok in the greater universe. We will attack other planets, we will suck them dry, and I! I'm sorry to say though, we know for a fact this peace is only temporary. We are sure to encounter further hostilities. Because far in the future, that ends up being the past. The descendants of the Autobots and Decepticons continue their timeless conflict. No, this war is not over and we're definitely not done with this multiverse yet. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for an unlimited supply of Energon. And don't forget to blast your fusion cannon towards that like button.